Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome to Heartbeats. Today we're talking to Michael Plaxton Harrison, who is a solo guitarist and he's also involved in two bands, Some Grow Young and Greedy Greg. I know you're gonna love it. Okay, so uh, my mother played guitar and piano. Oh, okay. Yeah, or okay. well, plays, well, played guitar and yeah, did a great eight in piano. Mm. So we had a boudoir um, wow. piano when we grew up. But yeah, I picked up the um, the nylon, which is a Levine nylon, like a really old instrument, beautiful instrument, and um, it was right hand. Mm. So I started playing upside down and then. Well, no, left yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I started to dabble, and then uh, a couple of my friends in school, this was about standard three, standard four, 12 years old, 11 years old, um, got into guitar. So I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to get a guitar too. So my mother bought me a right handed instrument, I mean, a left handed instrument. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 buy your right handed instrument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. So, yeah, then I started and started like lessons with a kind of a contemporary player and we learned like Nirvana and That's Metallica cool. and yeah. all of those sort of things on the acoustic, acoustic guitar, got electric guitar and then as I moved into high school I picked up music as a subject where you had to study, um, well I had to pick up the nylon string back to classical guitar. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and I studied to grade 8 under a professor uh, called Fritz Buss and he he was very hard on me, which was quite good for my playing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I did grade eight with him. I left school. I needed to get out of the constraints of classical music because I just didn't really enjoy the composition so much. There was no freedom in yeah. classical music. It was so regimented, or whatever the word is. Yeah, yeah. And stuck to the bars, my teacher used to tell me no rubato, which is like <laughs> slowing down at the end of the bars. And yeah, so you gotta yeah, keep it exactly as Exactly, it's yes, and mm -hmm. at the same tempo, and and that wasn't the reason I started guitar. Um, Why did you start guitar? To express myself. Okay, cool. Yeah. Your dreams as a kid, have they stayed the same musically, or have you kind of changed? And Yeah, I think um, kind of my idols when I was a kid was Red Hot Chili Peppers and Rock and Roll. And now I'm kind of happy playing alone, um, and this is obviously not uh, rock music that I, I perform no. for you now. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, and playing, I feel good playing. So yeah, that's why I went down that alley, not for mandatory reasons or not for uh, fame reasons or anything like yeah, that. It's, yeah. I play; it makes me feel good. So I'll carry on playing and I'll practice. So in a few years time then I can express myself in a better ability and then hopefully at some point I'll be happy with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at some point, yeah, you'll get there. Yeah. Would you like to be a full-time musician? And even with the amount that you're playing, what are the challenges that you've gone through to get you to this point where you're like two bands and you're a solo act? Yeah, it's it's tough because obviously the hours, I am like a ADD workaholic so I'd mm -hmm. like to keep busy. So for about the last four years, on and off, I would be working um, eight hours job and then eight hours music. Whoa. Yeah, so that could involve uh, studio time, rehearsals, practicing, um, giving lessons, going for lessons. Um, and yes, I was like full time in two bands and then my solo act, but I do a moonlight a lot. So that could add another six or seven acts. Jesus or up to 10 acts at a given time where I'm playing which involves rehearsing, gigging and the gigging obviously involves uh, drinking mm -hmm. uh, and socializing so staying up longer and yes. there you go <laughs> yeah so the 12 o'clock 2 in the mornings waking up at 8 again mm -hmm. it does take its toll but I'm not complaining nah yeah why is it important for you to be in bands but also to remain a solo act? Um, well firstly I Obviously I'm playing instrumental now and I started performing even during school from 14 I started in um, various acts 
and yeah, I was just a guitarist in the band, mm. and there was a singer, and I got to solo every uh, <laughs> maybe uh, every song or second song, yeah, eight yeah. bars or four bars, and I wasn't happy. I wanted to play more. Yeah. I don't know if it was I wanted to be in the limelight more, or if I wanted to express myself more, or mm. I just wanted to be playing more. I didn't want to be backing up. Well, so, in a band, I mean, you have like how many creative influences? You know, you have to give everybody their rights to. Mm. Help create music, so it is very different. Yes, and that being said, the um, band that I'm fronting now yeah. is called Greedy Greg. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same thing. You said there's <laughs> yeah. a couple people all putting in, yeah. but I wanted to put in more because I'm greedy and I wanted to play. <laughs> so um, it's very guitar orientated, guitar, drums, and bass. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of playing. You always play, so you never. Get bored on stage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always something cool to do. Definitely. Yeah, and same with solo act, you obviously have to be playing the whole time or yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to play or talking, I guess. <laughs> Will yeah. you be releasing a solo album with songs like Sexy Sexy? Um, the title Sexy Sexy, I think I've changed. <laughs> oh, right, okay, what is it now? <laughs> uh, Jazzy A, or um, yeah, I don't know if we've figured out a name there. Uh, but I've given that song to Greedy Greg now. Oh, okay. Um, I do most of the material for Greedy Greg, and obviously I started um, writing the compositions on a loop station solo. Yeah. And now I want to get off the loop station. I only want to be playing open songs where I'm not confined to a loop. So yeah. the more um, sexy, sexy kind of songs, or a freak, um, and some of my other YouTube songs, yeah. I've actually. I've incorporated them to the band now. Okay. And How do you choose which ones you keep and which ones you give? <laughs> yes. Well, the I couldn't play uh, some of those songs without a loop station. Yeah. So I don't want to be bringing my loop station to my gigs anymore. So that's okay. Yes, I don't want to be a loop artist. Maybe um, if I play one or two songs of loops in my set. Okay, so all the loopable ones, gone. Gone. You're pretty, starting fresh. Yes. Okay, cool. And then I'm writing more of these um, wayward, I call them landscape -y, kind of like paints a picture if you close your eyes. You can either see a picture or generally fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Tells a story. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do you ever get to the point where you're so comfortable with the style of playing that you do that you're like, God, I've got to break out my own box now because I've got a box. Well, you just did, right, with your looping play. Mm. How often does that happen for you? Yes, it's, um, it's, as you know, as a musician, you're never satisfied, but there are yeah. brief moments of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So you'd be um, working towards a place and you'll get there and then you'll be content. And if that contention, if that's the right word? Contentment, I think. <laughs> contentment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If that contentment would last a week or a few months, that would be it, but it's temporary. It's yeah, it's not what I was yeah. And then I'd work on a uh, new stuff. I'm, I'm quite liking the rockabilly vibe oh, now. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's very different. Yeah, rockabilly, BB uh, King. Mm. This is stuff people got into earlier in their playing, which I was never interested in. Um, this piece had a lot of influence, uh, like by players like Guy Battery, um, who I look up to big time, yeah. and he's got some really cool stuff. Um, so I got a lot of inspiration by him and I composed um, songs from that inspiration and now I'm getting inspiration from um, other places as well and yeah. yeah, I'm using that and... If you could jam with any artist, dead or alive, you know, you could bring them back. Oh, this is a tough one. Yeah, who would it be? It's, I've actually had this conversation before. I'm so sure, I, yeah. I'm a big fan, obviously, left-handed player. I grew up listening to Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. And... Um, I said, jeez, I'd love to play with Jimi Hendrix, and then I thought, I said, no, because he's going to do all the solos. <laughs> 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 oh my god, you're going to be like his band anyway. Yeah, oh so god. then I'll just be uh, the backup uh, <laughs> guitarist. So. But uh, as saying that, getting some of his knowledge mm -hmm. would be great, and rather than jamming with him, having a conversation with him, yeah, or yeah. trying to explain with him or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Jimi Hendrix. I got a lot of inspiration by um, Muse, Matt Bellamy. Mm. He's um, some. If you listen to some, come to a Greedy Greg show, you'll hear some aspects of his um, composition in mine. With a lot of tension, and yeah, I 
I guess I'd like to play it anyway. <laughs> yeah. If it's open for a jam. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Alright, so uh, with Beauty Greg, uh, they had a drummer that was similar. Well, Sun Grow Young's drummer, Steve, right? And yes. Now that he's just left Beauty Greg, you had the opportunity to leave, obviously, as well. Why did you choose to stay? Circumstance. Um, me and Steve, I was Steve Jam for many, many bands, and our relationship was the longest um, musical relationship out of all of his and obviously all of mine. And when he left, we gelled so well together. He knew what I was going to do, when I was going to do it, what mood I was in, how I was going to play in that mood, and um, it's not the way I play, it doesn't have to sound the same each time. Yeah. Yeah. So we were going to have our last gig and Steve was leaving, he's gone to LA to pursue his um, drumming career, which we are um, very happy for him. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, we played a couple sh the last show and we got a couple good opportunities from that last show. Okay, cool. Yeah, and someone wanted a residency and we got a couple festivals lined up and so it brought something good? It brought something good and we had practiced with the drummer for Opico because Steve couldn't make it and then he could make it and it just seemed like less work if we just went with Steve so um, we had to let the, uh, Max, the other drummer, down yeah. uh, who is a, an amazing drummer and now we got him back and we're having, yeah, we've played about three gigs with him Cool man And they're going really well It's not really great, they never actually released an album right? You guys are always saying you're going to do you feel that now you're ready to we, put some material down? We recorded a live EP, I think the week before Steve left. Really? Yeah. Oh my word. So we were in the studio for one day, probably about six hours or seven yeah. hours, and we recorded nine tracks. <laughs> what? Um, well, all live. Yeah. We did about two takes of each track just in case, and we got everything. Oh, so there yeah. You go. Um, on Sunday, yesterday, we were in the studio for 13 hours mixing. Yeah. Because we, um, the guy who's rec recording us, incidentally, also a musician that we play with, plays for Naming James, and he played for bass for Sun Grey Young. Oh, yeah. Uh, he re engineered, recorded, and he's mixing us. He's also moving to the States <laughs> on Saturday, so oh we have to gosh. quickly finish this before he moves to America. Wow, it's a credit as well. Perfect timing here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that will be released in the next month. And then oh, we're going to, awesome. we probably do like a, a launch in Joburg and Pretoria, release it on iTunes um, for free. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then maybe make some, do some discs. We were thinking of doing an LP as well. We've got some nice artwork, and then we'll sell that at okay. gigs or for promo. Okay, cool. Like it, man. Mm. Okay guys, that was part one. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for part two, where Michael's going to be chatting about his views on the SA music scene, some girl young, the band he's in, lessons that he has learned, and his dreams about busking in the future. So I know you're going to enjoy it. Thank you.